Uh, today I'm going to talk about a uh, report on seismic damage of, uh, in the actual large earthquake in Japan. Uh, this is the agenda of my presentation. First, I will start with introduction of my presentation. Then, I will introduce you uh, changes of seismic design guideline in Japan. After that, uh, I will show you, I'd like to show you two examples of actual damage of lifts and uh, escalators in Japan. And finally, I will make a brief summary of my presentation. So let me start with introduction. Uh, this, is the, this slide shows the re relationship between the Japan and the earthquake. And uh, Japan is located on the fourth uh, plate on the earth, uh, just like this. So we have many earthquakes in Japan. And the small circle shows uh, the epicenter of earthquake. So we can find Japan at here. So we have a lot of earthquake. Uh, for example, Japan has only 0.1% of the area of total whole, whole earth. However, the 21% of earthquake was a magnitude six was occurred in Japan and the surrounding sea. And also 10% of seismic energy dissipated in Japan and the surrounding sea. So we have, very, uh, we have many earthquakes in Japan. Uh, meanwhile, um, 1890, the first electric passenger lift in Japan was installed in building in Tokyo. However, uh, the building that the lift was in installed in was collapsed by large earthquake in 1923. So from this, uh, lifts in Japan have experienced various large earthquakes and uh, the seismic design guideline in Japan was revised according to the damage, actual damage from uh, this kind of earthquake. Uh, especially in this decade, we have uh, two very strong earthquakes in Japan. The one is Great East Japan earthquake uh, that was the uh, largest earthquake ever observed in Japan. The other is Kumamoto earthquake. It is very strange earthquake for us, e even Japanese, because the earthquake consisted of two large earthquakes uh, within 28 hours. So in my presentation, uh, I will, I'd like to show you changes of seismic design guideline and, uh, in Japan. And uh, uh, I'd like to share with you about regarding damage of lifts and escalator from these two earthquakes. So let's move on to the changes of seismic design guideline in Japan. Uh, the first uh, seismic design guideline in Japan was established by uh, Japan Elevator Association in 1972. And the uh, standard is based on the actual damage of San Fernando earthquake in the United States in 1971. Then, uh, in 1978, a Miyagi earthquake occurred in Japan. So seismic design guideline was newly established in, uh, instead of design prevention standard uh, by Building Center of Japan. After that, uh, in 1995, Kobe earthquake occurred and the damage of escalators are uh, reported. So, uh, in 1998, seismic design guideline was newly issued by the Building Center Japan. So the new seismic design guideline considered seismic design of escalator. So this is the first uh, uh, seismic design guideline for escalator in Japan. Then uh, in 2004 and 2005, we have some earthquake and the resonance of uh, lobs in the high-rise buildings occurred, and also many passengers are locked in the car. So 2009, uh, seismic design guideline was revised by the Japan Building Equi Equipment and Elevator Center and the Japan Elevator Association. 
So uh, revised seismic design guideline considered countermeasures against the resonance of long ropes and uh, also improvement of earthquake emergency operation. Under uh, 2011, Great East Japan earthquake occurred and uh, as Professor Fujita said before, a uh, fall of escalators occurred. And uh, this is uh, the latest uh, seismic design guideline uh, in 2014 and 16. 16 was a minor revision of the uh, seismic design guideline. And uh, in this uh, guideline, uh, countermeasure of falling of escalators and uh, assessment of major support parts of lifts and so on were considered. So next, uh, I'd like to show you damage from Great East Japan earthquake in 2011. Uh, this slide shows the summary of the earthquake. The, uh, the earthquake occurred in March 11, uh, 2011, and the hypocenter was approximately 130, 130 kilometers east, southeast of the Oshika Peninsula. And uh, the moment magnitude was uh, 9.0. It was the largest earthquake in Japanese history. And uh, next slide uh, summarizes the feature of the earthquake, Great East Japan earthquake. The earthquake has very long duration time. For example, this is the time histories of ground motion uh, observed in Tokyo, Shinjuku area. As you can see, uh, the ground motion continued more than 10 minutes. So a lot of uh, long wire rope uh, resonate this kind of very long wave. In addition, damage of uh, damage da damage area is very wide. So the even in uh, lift even in Osaka area, it's very far from the epicenter resonate as well. And uh, the earthquake has so many aftershocks, and also uh, the tsunami is more uh, severe accident by the uh, severe disaster by the earthquake. So the uh, Japan Elevator Association investigated damage of the lifts and the escalators uh, by questionnaire. So next few slides shows the uh, result of the investigation. Uh, this graph shows, this pie chart shows damage of lifts uh, by course. Uh, incident ratio was about 2.43% and uh, the entanglements of rope account for the uh, four over, uh, one over four of the total damage. Uh, this is because large area in Japan, including Tokyo, were affected by the earthquake and the ropes of high-rise building, especially in Tokyo, resonate with uh, such kind of long period ground motion. And uh, this is the map uh, of the central Japan. As you can see, uh, Tokyo is here. And uh, Tokyo is located on the uh, flat uh, area. Uh, so this kind of uh, area generate relatively long uh, period ground motion. So the, this kind of uh, ground motion resonate high rise building and uh, uh, wire ropes inside the building. And uh, also many damages by flooding occurred, uh, this green area, uh, by, because of a tsunami. And uh, although the number was very small, uh, some falling of counterweights broke occurred. And it will be uh, severe damage if the counterweights fall or attack in the car, attack to the car, and a lot of damage caused by inter interaction with building or card. So, uh, in my opinion, close cooperation with structural engineers of buildings is strongly recommended. Uh, next, to some uh, slides shows the um, picture of actual damage. Uh, this is the captured governor rope and red dotted circle is original position of the ropes. And the ropes vibrate uh, strongly and then finally uh, cap captured at this point. 
And uh, these pictures uh, were damaged in a hoist way, uh, especially hoist away wall. And also, uh, this is, uh, these are damaged in the machine room. So, and also, uh, these are damage of entrance hall. So as you can see, the damage of the lift is very uh, related to the building itself. And uh, this next graph shows uh, damage of lifts by guideline. As you can see, incident ratio decreases with the addition of the seismic guideline. So revision of the guideline was effectively uh, conducted, I think. Our next uh, pie chart shows damage of escalators by course, and the incident ratio was about 4%. As you can see, flooding account for the one over five of the total damage. This is because the tsunami, and the damage uh, caused by the interaction with buildings such as the position shift, and also the damage of landing plate of cars. And uh, for escalators, is in shopping malls fell from floors of buildings. So a project and revision of the guideline regarding for accidents were carried out as a previous presentation. Our next graph shows damage of escalators by guideline. Uh, incident ratio before uh, 1998 was small compared with uh, the escalator designed by using uh, seismic design guideline in 1998. Um, however, incident ratio of escalator after uh, 2009 decreased. So next uh, topic is another earthquake, another large earthquake in Japan. Uh, the Kumamoto earthquake occurred in uh, April uh, 14, in 2016, uh, in Kuma Kyushu region. But uh, it was very strong earthquake, but it was just for shock, uh, 28, about 28 hours later, another very huge earthquake occurred at the same point, same area. And uh, so this is very strange uh, earthquake disaster. So feature of the earthquake is that uh, that is a series of strong ground motions that has JMEA seismic intensity of seven. Uh, that is the highest level of the uh, seismic intensity. And uh, so main cause of the damage was strong ground motion. So the uh, Japan uh, Elevator Association is, uh, Japan Elevator Association investigated by using same uh, methodology of the investigation as Great, Great East Japan earthquake. So next uh, pie chart shows the damage of lifts by course. The incident ratio was about uh, 1%, and the damage related to the building, such as entanglement of rope and the damage of rail, red one, and so on, uh, occurred. And uh, it was uh, occurred in uh, all the lift uh, fall of counterweight block. And uh, this is that. Uh, damage of lift by guideline. As you can see, uh, incident, uh, incidence ratio decreased with the addition as well as Great East Japan earthquake. So the revision was effective. And the next pie chart shows uh, damage of escalator by course. The incident ratio was about 4% and damage related to the interaction with building, such as damage of landing plate orange one, and uh, the external panel or lighting blue one occurred. And the uh, next graph shows damage of escalators by guideline in Kumamoto earthquake. And the incident ratio somehow increased with the uh, addition except uh, 2014. So next, finally, uh, conclusion. In my presentation, uh, I talked the changes of Japanese uh, seismic guideline and uh, the actual uh, damage from earthquake in Japan. And uh, as a result, a seismic design guideline of Japan was revised according to actual damage from large earthquakes 
and the, the, the revision was basically effective to improve seismic reliability of reefs. And in my opinion, cooperation with the structural engineers of buildings is strongly recommended to reduce the damage of lifts and escalators. Thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>